Ramananda? Are we good? Okay, come on out here for a sec. So this morning, uh, <clears throat> to, to begin with, rather than the usual recitation of the Sri Brahma Samhita, I'm, I'm, doing as, uh, I'm doing a project for His Grace Rupa Nuga Prabhu, which is to make a, a presentation about book distribution for zonal supervisors. What are zonal supervisors, one might ask? The GBC is a, a body of devotees who manage uh, ISKCON. However, there's not enough of them to cover the whole world because ISKCON now has thousands of places around the world and there's only about 32 people on the GBC. So instead of expand the number of GBCs per se, they expanded uh, by appointing uh, what they call GBC supervisors. So they have the same duties and powers of the GBC, only uh, they don't attend all the international meetings. And now there's a training course that's being uh, prepared and conducted by Rupa Nuga Prabhu, who lives in Laguna Beach, California, who's a very qualified person. He's a PhD in management and teaches at a top flight university in Orange County. And he's also my management guru. He asked me recently to prepare a film of, uh, that, will be, that will orient uh, zonal supervisors, GBC zonal supervisors around the world that will be presented at their training sessions they have uh, two weeks out of the year in uh, the global, the, the eco-village near Bombay, Govardhan eco-village. And there they, they give sort of a, a mini NBA uh, course, uh, which in, includes a connection to training that's relevant to, to ISKCON. So one of the sections that, was, that they needed was something about book distribution. So we're going to film before a live studio audience today. Uh, it's pretty much, it's very similar to the presentation I normally give, only I'm going to tailor it towards the zonal supervisors. So you might, if you see I'm going too far one way or the other, you can coach me back to the center. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> we also, I talked to Rupa Nuga Prabhu this morning, and he thought it was a good idea that uh, I film it right here at ISV. Uh, because we already have the facility, I'm already sitting here. And also he liked the idea that we can show the PowerPoint simultaneously along with the presentation. Correct, Ramananda? Okay, good. So what do you all think of the idea? It's okay, right? Do I have your permission? Okay. Pardon me? Well, uh, he told me to, let me tell you what he wanted me to cover. He said, he wanted me to talk about the significance of book distribution, uh, methods of book distribution, tips for neglected zones, and what is the role of the zonal, what role does the zonal supervisor play in book distribution? Do you all have any thoughts on that before we begin? Do you want to help brainstorm it? We have microphones out here. So what is the significance of book distribution? What are the methods of book distribution? Tips for neglected zones? What role does the zonal supervisor play in book distribution? Do you have any suggestions? Things you'd like to hear in any of those categories? What do you suggest? Mukaravinda. The business as soon as possible in that area where it's Okay, so you see it as, a, as an opportunity to advertise the book, our family business coming out on February 24th <laughs> in Mayapur, which subtitled The Great Art of Distributing Srila Prabhupada's Books. What are the points? The 
the neglected zone, you could bring up that ISV had conducted a seminar for Sankirtan last year. I'm, I'm thinking we'll be offering more. They can participate in such seminars. That they can, can come and participate in, in an SOS. What else? Blank slates. Okay, you're open to anything then. Yes? A little low on the volume out here for the audience. Yeah, I'm not very clear on the question, Prabhu. Good, that helps. So the question is, if you were going to be presenting to new people who were getting trained up in the role of zonal supervisor, that means they're going to be overseeing several temples or maybe more, and their duty is to increase book distribution, to instill the proper perspective of book distribution in that zone, to um, give specific tips and ideas, what would you think would be the important principal points? One thing is to establish the relevance of books in this digital age, where people mostly consume through electronic and um, not even written text, but mostly through videos and um, other forms of consuming information. Okay. Thank you. I was just yes. thinking how, I think maybe you already covered, like how to build the culture of the temple around book distribution. Okay. Because it's, it's like how that becomes the heart and then everything else follows. Good. What else? Uh, Maharaj, I think that to have a book room like which we have it, as a central point, because once you have something which is central to the things, everything revolves around that one. So I think it is very okay. powerful. Nice. I'm pretty sure you're going to cover all these, but leveraging technology. Assume that I'm not going to cover anything. Okay. <laughs> Assume that I've, my mind has gone blank and I can't remember anything about book distribution. Yeah. What is it? Um, leveraging technology as much as possible. Leveraging technology. And then also... Um, Yes. For the neglected zones, that it is, it is fun and easy. Okay. I was thinking about how everybody in the temple can participate, including the kids, and every single, um, whether they're a newbie or uh, whoever can participate. And dogs. Definitely dogs can participate. Shivan and Desain set the precedent. Yes. Uh, making corporate connections. And corporate, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, making the themes of presentations so that they are aligned with the people like their profession. For example, somebody is in marketing or somebody is in finance. So how can he or she um, make his profession better by reading these books? So. The presentations should be themed along those lines. Nice. Anything else? Plan, planning for the year, how we do plan it out. Year planning. Um, okay. Prabhuji, getting more sponsors. Sponsorship. Nice. Uh, like MSF or something where uh, monthly there is some target goal and uh, let uh, everyone who is coming to the temple know that there is something going on like this. Because many times in temples, like uh, those who come, they don't only a few handful of people know about book distribution and goal. Not everyone knows. If they know, like they would like to participate more and more. Nice. Very good. Maharaj, re-emphasize on Prabhupada's mission. I think that's probably, to me, it's the biggest way to going back to the basics, but it's, it's critical they focus, then I think everything will follow from there. Good. 
have realistic goals. Realistic goals. And for the supervisors, um, encourage the heck out of everyone. A lot doing a little? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes when we come up with a new service or something, people might be a little um, uh, intimidated saying, oh, I don't have time for this or something, but making it as small as possible initially and slowly increasing it might encourage them to do it. Okay. Good principle to, to emphasize. Along the same lines, uh, traditionally in ISKCON, the book distribution is thought of as like a brahmacharis, full-time devotees service, but um, giving the confidence that everybody can Everybody do. can do. Okay. Good. Motel Gita Hospital. Motel Gita Okay. Ramananda, are you ready? I think this is a very good looking audience. So, and there's enough here, so uh, you, can, you can get some tight shots of the audience also. So look sharp, okay. Uh, Maharaj, uh, emphasize on reading the books as well, because if, if we read, I think then there is, a, there is a desire to distribute. Okay, here's what we've got so far. <clears throat> Um, talk about electronic media and its role in spreading the holy name and Krishna's message. Discuss the culture of book distribution as the heart of the community. Talk about how a book room becomes a central point and you can judge the health of your community by the, by the way that your book room is set up. <clears throat> Leverage technology of all kinds. For instance, recently we've had big breakthroughs with WhatsApp in keeping everyone in communication with one another. Make sure everyone knows that it's fun and easy. Book distribution is fun and easy. Everyone say the mantra. Book distribution is fun and easy. Just like that. And everyone's invited. It's, it's not just for a select few, but, but everyone in the community, including kids, and animals, you know, dogs, crocodiles, lizards, whoever you have at home, they can all do book distribution. Everyone's invited, right? Then we have a corporate sankirtan. Don't neglect the poor corporate people who are stuck in those little prisons there. <laughs> Locked into cubicles and so forth. Give them an opportunity. It's, it's just a it really such a touching thing to hear how devotees are infiltrating these institutions and giving people a chance to join in the Lord Chaitanya Sankirtan movement. Uh, learn to align the presentation with people's particular professions so that they can relate to it. Is that what you said? Yeah. Then, um, stress Srila Prabhupada's mission. What did he... What did he come to do? What was he focused on? What did he spend most of his time doing? And what are the, some of the things that he said about the book publication and printing? Talk about how basics work best. If you stick to the basics, if you stick to fundamental programs that emphasize outreach and preaching, then other kinds of things like management follow like a shadow and good things happen Financial stability comes in a very holistic and organic way. Realistic goals. Give goals that you can, you can make or smash and be, remain undefeated because then it builds a track record. Encourage the heck out of everyone. As a management principle, fan the spark. See what people are doing right and then encourage them. Tell them they're doing something right. We're a volunteer organization, and in volunteer organizations, people are motivated by something other than their paycheck and how much they're going to get. So we need to make a culture where people feel enlivened, and encouraged, recognized in their services. A lot of people each doing a little bit. 
is a good formula. It's got, it has stability. If there's a few people doing a lot and one of them decides to go back home to mama, then it's, <laughs> it's all done. Uh, you reduce by 50%. Whereas if everyone's encouraged and everyone can do their level best without feeling any undue stress or pressure, then there's a very stable model that can, can be extended into the future. And read the books, emphasize strong sadhana, which as the genesis for the Sankirtan program, our very impetus to distribute comes from the overflow that we get from the inspiration we're feeling from associating with the great souls that come through literature, with getting seed ideas that are carried in these books like containers. We're feeling inspiration in the early morning hours by actually hearing the name Hare Krishna. And we see that this name is something special. And we feel inspired to give it to other people. It all comes from that. Is that good? Available resources like... Okay. And I think also this doesn't need to be too uh, formal or stiff. If there's points that you want to bring up during it, then uh, just make sure when you speak, you hold the microphone light right like this. It should actually be touching your chin. Try that wherever you are. Touch your chin. Now say something. Hare Krishna. There. Say. Hare Krishna. That works. Anybody up front? Practice. Touch. Yeah, try it. Touch your chin. Go. Yeah. I have Mike has idea. to touch your chin. One more idea. There you go. Okay. Hare Krishna. Can I go ahead? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we can also develop ways to adapt the preaching methods with the <coughs> latest trends in society, which will attract more youth and people who are normally reluctant to come to temple or cultural events. For example, one such activity is flash mob, which is like dancing suddenly a, a group of 20 people to just are prepared, already trained on a certain music with a team of uh, camera and everything, and with, with due permission of the authority, they perform at a certain point. So it could be a mall or a railway station. And uh, for example, ISKCON Bangalore, they are like multiple videos on YouTube. They are having flash mob events in Bangalore city where they have flash kirtans all of a sudden. OK. We'll do it. <laughs> Count us in, flash mobs. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Ramananda, you're just already filming anyway, because you always film, so then we'll just go ahead and roll, and then Rupanuga Prabhu can uh, edit out whatever he doesn't like in the future. Okay? Yeah, it's being broadcast also. So uh, all of you who are online, we welcome you this morning. Hare Krishna. Everyone please say Hare Krishna. And if you have ideas or thoughts during the seminar, it, text them in and we'll include them in the, in the supervisor training. Get counted. We'll even mention your name, so it's in there forever. Oma jnana tibirandasya jnananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam dina tasmai shi gurave namaha shi chaitanya mano pishtam stapitam yena bhutale Swayam rupa kadah mayam dadati swapadantikam vandeham shri guru sri yuta parakamalam shri guru vaishnavam cha shri rupam sagrajatam sahagana ragunatam vitam tam sajivam Sadvetam Sadvatutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shivishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindo Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripasandu Pyevacha 
Patitanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Shivasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Gopremanande Hare Hare Bo Welcome to the seminar today for GBC Zonal Supervisors. Such an important role in ISKCON to take responsibility upon one's head to help manage this great society so that it's in place to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. This requires balance. Today, specifically, we're going to talk about the role of zonal supervisors and their teaching of Sankirtan. And particularly, I'll focus on book distribution. We have a legacy that we're following. A legacy comes from a word that means to receive a gift, to pass something on to others. And we've been given a gift through the Sampradaya. And the gift is the complete knowledge that comes from the spiritual world about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is something that comes down out of mercy, just as it's mentioned in the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, that Shukadev Goswami, only out of compassion, traveled the world and then spoke the Srimad Bhagavatam just to deliver people from the dark material world. So this is our legacy. This is something that we've inherited, this opportunity to carry on the message as has been given to us by our gurus. It's a matter of gift giving. And it's the best work that you can get to wholeheartedly give to others. In fact, those who have a life of giving feel always that they're living in abundance. Because when we give, we grow. Whatever we hold on to, we simply uh, stress over. We think, how will we keep it? How will we preserve it? But we can't. But when we give away the best things that we have, we have them forever. For instance, those who give away their money, they then have grown larger. When you try to keep money, it's an impossible task. It simply burns, as they say, burns a hole in your pocket, burns a hole in your bank account, and you end up losing it one way or another anyway. We give away our time, we give away our energy, and when we distribute what we have, it grows in our own life. So this is sankirtan. This is what book distribution means. And in a, the history of our Gaudiya Sampradaya, we can see the gi great gift givers like Advaita Acharya, who simply wanted to give the gift of Krishna consciousness to all living entities. In fact, he suffered because he saw that people didn't have it. They were wasting their valuable lives doing everything but worship Krishna. There are so many things one can do in this world, and Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Bahu Shaka one's mind becomes unlimitedly enlivened to do sense gratification in this world and thinks in many, many different ways. But then it's not fulfilling. It simply puts anxiety in one's mind. But when one focuses, as Advaita Charya Prabhu is doing here, on calling Krishna forward to distribute Krishna consciousness, one's mind becomes focused. Vyavasayatmika Bhuti. And Srila Prabhupada said this was the key to his spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world. He focused on this one instruction given to him by his spiritual master, which was spread Krishna consciousness all over the world, especially in the West. He thought of one thing, and he focused on that, and this is what Advaita Acharya did when he propitiated the, the Lord to please come down and help empower him and to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared because of the loud cries of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and here he is appearing in Navadvip, and as an incarnation, he was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is the Supreme Personality of Godhead directly. But he came during the time in which the Yuga Dharma must also be spread. And he taught 
in a very simple way how to spread the Yuga Dharma. One thing is chant Hare Krishna. And the second is teach it to others. So number one is? But you've got to say it a little louder because the audience can't hear you. Number one is? Chant Hare Krishna. Number two? Number two? Number one? Yes, yeah, so it's a very simple process. Only two parts. Chant Hare Krishna and teach others to chant Hare Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda set up a marketplace. So marketing is a science. Quantitative reasoning skills involved. Also qualitative analysis involved. Psychology, sociology, everything is included in marketing because one has to think very carefully how to appeal to a wide audience, how to deliver what one, wants, what one has to others. Throughout history, we've seen various religious movements, and we can note that it's not always easy to give what you have. People don't necessarily want to hear it. They don't necessarily want to take it. We have seen instances in which various religious groups forced people to take what they had. There are the Crusades, for instance, when people were asked to accept, convert, or die. It's things like this still go on today. However, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission was to market the holy name. That is, to make it so appealing that people would take it everywhere. And therefore, his path of Krishna consciousness, his marketing technique is described as Kevala Ananda Kanda, simply joyful. He makes it so appealing that people want to come from everywhere. It's attractive. And this is our goal, our duty as zonal supervisors to make the Sankirtan movement, the chanting of Hare Krishna, the Krishna literatures so attractive that people will want to take them into their lives and take up the practice of Krishna consciousness. What is our scope? It's large. Every town and village. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uttered that his holy name should be heard in every town and village. And how will this be accomplished? By organization. That's where zonal supervisors come in. One must use all of one's organizing power to help this mission expand to every town and village. This is your job, to expand the chanting of Hare Krishna and the distribution of Krishna conscious literatures. And here's a picture of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself dancing down the streets of Miami, Florida. And that's not so out of place because now we see all over the world that people are taking to chanting Hare Krishna and dancing down the streets in many modern cities of the world, including Fifth Avenue in New York City. And more and more, this scene will become familiar as the Sankirtan movement expands. So at one point, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement became hidden. Just after Lord Chaitanya's departure, the Sampradaya and the message became dissipated and perverted in various ways. And this can happen very easily. That's why a zonal supervisor has a duty to keep the mantra of chant Hare Krishna, teach others, distribute books in the forefront of every society so that people don't lose the message. They don't pervert the process, the sampradaya into something else and have it become lost. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement was lost over time, and this happens because of the enervating effect of the material energy. But then a great acharya, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, came in 1891 and renewed the marketplace of the Holy Name. He reviewed the literatures of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Of course, he was sent as a representative to help continue the sampradaya, and he reopened the marketplace at Serbikunj and declared, it's now open again. And he gave great thought to how to market the holy name, how to market Krishna conscious literatures, how to get people involved in their own homes, make each home into a temple. And this is a very exciting prospect for anyone who's managing an ISKCON to think in this way, not just to think how to solve problems 
and to put out fires, so to speak, managerially, but think how to market the holy name, how to turn each person's home into a temple, how to turn each person's heart into a temple. And this is the real marketing job of the zonal supervisor in ISKCON. Bhaktivinoda Thakur's prayers, he wanted a ray of Vishnu. We noticed in Los Angeles, California, before they make the Nishringadev prayers every morning, the devotees at the Los Angeles temple pray for Krishna to send them more Sankirtan devotees. So this is a tradition in our line to pray, please send us those who can help us expand the Sankirtan movement. And that's what Bhakti, Bhaktivinoda Thakur did. Please send me someone in my family who can expand the Sankirtan movement, a ray of Vishnu. He also made a prediction from his own realization that this movement would be spread all over the world. And of course, movements are spread by people. And he said a great personality would come who would spread the movement all over the world. These things came to pass, of course, as we know from the history. Meanwhile, there's always pure devotees somewhere on the planet. Even when it appears that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission had gone underground completely, the pure holy name is always being chanted somewhere by some great soul. In our line, we have these great personalities like Gorkishore Das, Babaji Maharaj, stalwart devotees of the Lord who maintain the highest principles of pure devotional service, great beacons for the rest of the world on whom we can depend, on to whom we can pray. Bhak Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur then appeared as the ray of Vishnu that Bhaktivinoda Thakur had prayed for. And he expanded the marketplace of the holy name all over India. In a very short amount of time, he established dozens of vibrant temples full of highly educated young people who were writing articles, distributing books, and chanting the holy names to benefit people all over India. He also sent a delegation to Burma and to England with a view to break out of the subcontinent of India and reach into other parts of the world. This was his great desire. And this is the desire of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And it was coming through Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who then told Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, his disciple, to print books. He said, building temples can be troublesome. As soon as you build a temple, as they did in Calcutta, their flagship temple, the flagship temple for the Gaudiya Mat, the Bhag Bazar Mandir, which was basically donated by a very wealthy disciple who oversaw the construction until his very last breath, and then he expired right after it was built or just before it was inaugurated. But he, he gave millions of dollars to open that temple. He was a wealthy merchant. Just after it was built, some of the residents, the sannyasis, the brahmacharis who lived inside began to argue over who got which room, who was entitled to more than the others. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur was put off by this mentality. And therefore, he had this vision, better to sell the marble from this temple and print some books so that good can be done to the people in general rather than becoming enamored of opulent buildings and thinking, this is my room, that is your room, and becoming, again, calcified in this self-centered idea. The marketing of the holy name has to do with big-heartedness and thinking about sacrifice for others. So he told A.C. Bhaktivedanta, his disciple, Abhai Charanaravinda at that time, that if you ever get money print books, because his disciple Abhai Charanaravinda was asking Srila Bhaktisiddhanta, what should I do? What can my service be? And he said, if you ever get money, print books. And he told him this at Sri Radha Kund. So Srila Prabhupada said, I took up this from his mouth that he is very fond of books. And of course, we know the story that Srila Prabhupada came to America with only his trunks full of his first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and a few other little small books and pamphlets. 
and no money, no connections, but full faith that the Srimad Bhagavatam is the incarnation of Krishna. And if one depends on the Srimad Bhagavatam and distributes it to the society, that people's hearts will change. He came as an ambassador of goodwill. And we're interested in training ambassadors of goodwill. This is the role of a zonal supervisor, is to see that devotees are becoming trained in the art of connecting others to Krishna consciousness. So Srila Prabhupada brought this pamphlet. It was his first attempt to advertise the Bhagavatam. And he said, 60 volumes of elaborate English version. At the time, he had three volumes. He said 60. He also said, all over the world for scientific knowledge of God. All over the world, he didn't have any money. He didn't have any connections. He was all on his own. But he was thinking all over the world. So the GBC zonal supervisor, although working locally, must think globally. How to work together so that we can spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. We, we have a spirit of competition. At the same time, we should think how to cooperate so that the holy name goes out to everybody as much as possible. Here was Prabhupada's plan. By printing books, we can actually inject our movement into the masses of people all over the world. And what better way than through literature? Because the pen is mightier than the sword. The pen can go to places, the book, the pamphlet, the written word can go to places that we cannot go. And by distributing, Prabhupada pointed out that the communists were very expert in distributing their literature, and they converted tens and thousands of people by distributing mass quantities of literature. All over the world, books are respected, and they're also feared by those who want to keep power. That's why book burning has been popular amongst despots around the world who don't want to have any other ideology introduced. In fact, in many countries today, for instance, China or Iran, you can't just walk around and distribute books. Why not? What is the harm? The harm is when people get books, they form movements. They get ideologies that expand out into society and those who wish to control others do not like to see books distributed. So books are a highly effective way of spreading movements. Common Sense was a pamphlet written by Thomas Paine, 1775. These are the times that try men's souls. He distributed that pamphlet. He sold it in the colonies before the American Revolution for a small donation. And millions of people were able to read the pamphlet. And historians say this is what sparked the American Revolution. This is why we have this concept of America now. Because some people step forward. But how did they step forward? Through the written word. That's what made the difference. When you write something down, when you codify it, and you get it out to the people in general in a written form, on paper, in a book, in a pamphlet, it actually starts movements. It gets people going. That's why we distribute books. It's so important. In Cuba, same thing. Fidel Castro was in jail from his prison cell. How would he foment revolution? Through the written word. He smuggled out his written documents by writing with lemon juice on paper, which is not detectable until you put it in the sun. And then the lemon juice writing turns into darkened letters, and you can read it. His wife, Mirta, used to come and visit him, and a few pages at a time, she would take out what appeared to be blank pages, and then expose them to the sun, and she reconstituted this book called History Will Absolve Me, and it was distributed to the masses, and the revolution in Cuba took place much because of this written document that got out to the people. So this is a way of expanding Christian consciousness to the people all over the world through the written word. Prabhupada gave this famous statement, print as many books in as many languages and distribute throughout the whole world, Los Angeles, California. And this is not simply a sentiment, but it is an actual strategy, which is 
an important aspect of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Those who are in positions of management can take this as the serious uh, position of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, that we print literature and we distribute to the masses. And when the areas that you're organizing are based on this principle of outreach, giving people a chance to come in contact with the holy names, to come in contact with reading Krishna literature, then you'll have a solid foundation for your management system. Who are we competing with? Well, compared to others like the Jehovah's Witness, Watchtower, we have a long way to go. Don't think, oh, we're doing well. We distributed a few hundred books. Jehovah's Witnesses are already in 239 countries. They distribute their literature in 595 languages. And 46 million copies of their magazine go out every month. Holy Bible, Gideon Society, 196 countries, 93 languages. In 2002, they distributed 84.6 million copies. By 2015, they'll have hit the 2 billion mark in their distribution. We've distributed about 500 million books, Srila Prabhupada's books, since uh, the beginning up till about the present time. Time Magazine, circulation 2012, 3 million plus. Back to God in Magazine, it's a few thousand <laughs> subscriptions. So we have a lot of work to do, and it can be done. If others can do it, we can too. It's a strategy that is worth keeping in the forefront for any manager to see how one can increase the distribution of Prabhupada's books because it was one of his direct orders. And as Prabhupada writes himself in the second canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam in a purport to the Chatra Shloki, Shloki Bhagavatam, the direct order of the Lord is a manifestation of his internal energy. And this particular energy is the means of seeing the Lord face to face. What is the particular energy? It's the order. If you can take the order and lock yourself to it, marry that order, make it your life and soul, then you will be in touch with the direct energy, internal potency of the Lord. That's the great secret of the Krishna consciousness movement that Prabhupada advertised everywhere. He said, People are saying, I've done something wonderful. I don't think I've done anything wonderful. All I've done is embrace the order of my spiritual master and follow it strictly. So for the International Society for Krishna Consciousness to thrive, we only need to embrace the very clear orders that Prabhupada gave and do the best we can to follow them. Prabhupada gave this request regarding book distribution in particular. So kindly help me. This is my request. Please repeat. When you get an open order like this from a pure devotee, walk, don't run, uh, run, don't walk. Go there and embrace the order. Try to help him. And he said, I want that you, all my students, shall very vigorously try for this book distribution. Krishna himself says, there's no servant more dear to me than the one who spreads my message. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the direct order, become a spiritual master and try to liberate everyone in this land. You can, if you're going to get a tattoo, get this one. I don't recommend it. But if you do, you can get it from uh, Mathura. Yeah, Mathura Prashad Prabhu. He's going to become a tattoo artist. <laughs> can ask him for this tattoo. Become his spiritual master and try to liberate everyone in this land. Maybe he'll give you a 5% discount if you tell him you heard about it from this class. Simply by this attempt. Simply by this attempt. If you just try, if you just attempt to do this, it seems impossible sometimes. It seems overwhelming. I mean, how do you think Prabhupada felt when he came with nothing and no help 
his god brothers weren't so willing to help. And he was all alone. But he simply made the attempt. So if we make the attempt, Prabhupada says, by making the attempt, you will get superior strength and knowledge about Krishna consciousness. That's a powerful statement. If you just try, and you'll notice that those who are trying, those who are making the attempt, even though it seems impossible to get out of the material world, it seems impossible to spread Christian consciousness. It seems impossible to get out your door and go distribute Christian consciousness to others. And as a zonal supervisor, it may seem impossible to get your area inspired to do book distribution. But if you make the attempt, you will get superior strength and knowledge in Christian consciousness. You can make it known that book distribution is a rapid way to make spiritual advancement. It's high sadhana. It means when you try to do this, when you go out and meet people, you try to emphasize book distribution in your zone and you do it personally, you yourself will make rapid spiritual advancement. And that's the purpose of our Christian consciousness movement. Foremost is to make spiritual advancement. So that's our legacy. We've been given a, a clear mandate to go on printing and distributing as many books as possible. Prabhupada pushed book distribution more than anything else and asked us to be fully involved in it at all levels. And from that, he said, in the seventh purpose of ISKCON, which he wrote, would help to develop all the other purposes of ISKCON. He said all the aforementioned purposes of ISKCON, the, f the first six, would be realized by printing and distributing books all over the world. Now here's something very practical for GBC zonal supervisors that they can teach to people in their areas about how to, dis how to expand book distribution. Here are the four laws of book distribution. And if you simply follow these four laws, you will be successful in expanding your book distribution program guaranteed or your money back from this seminar. <laughs> Four laws of book distribution are, everyone please say, your sadhana must be strong. Two, you must get books. Three, the more you show, the more you sell. And four, you must organize. Now here's how they work. First, our entire movement is based on strong sadhana. Without that, it doesn't matter how much you manage. It doesn't matter how much you organize. You won't have anything. There's nothing to organize. There's nothing to manage, unless there's strong sadhana. Our movement is about hearing and chanting. Shrinvatam swakata krishna punya shravana kirtana hridyan taksto hibadrani fitunoti suhritsatam. The Bhagavatam couldn't be more clear. The purpose of life is to hear and chant about God. That's why the human body was created. Either that or sense gratification. But those who are already on a progressive path and have chosen to spiritualize their life can be directed very clearly, hear and chant about God. And it says, punya shravana kirtana. If you want to accumulate spiritual power and get progress, just hear about Krishna. So every Zone has to emphasize, every zonal manager has to emphasize strong sadhana. And Prabhupada gave this mandate to every GBC. Go around and make sure that people are enlivened. Make sure that they're following the principles. Make sure that they're chanting Hare Krishna, doing 16 rounds. Because if people are doing that, practically very little management is needed. It's when people aren't doing good sadhana that problems come up arguments come up, and difficulties seem to loom in our lives. But when one has strong sadhana, if you wake up early in the morning and chant 16 good rounds, any problem will seem doable. Any problem will, will seem overcomable. Uh, and similarly for managers, you're, if we emphasize strong sadhana in our temples and make sure that devotees are giving, getting good doses of hearing and chanting, which is based on strict, serious, and sincere sadhana, then things will go well. When devotees get a taste, then it's natural that they want to distribute the overflow. And I saw this in our early temples 
One of our early temples in ISV was in a storefront on Union Avenue. And I remember one of our new congregational devotees had gone out on book distribution for the first time uh, the day before. And he was there in class listening very intently to the Bhagavatam class. And someone came by our storefront and looked in the window and then walked away. And I saw this devotee jump up, run out the door, and give the person some literature so that they could take it home because he couldn't stand seeing the person look in the window and then walk away. He had such a desire to give Krishna consciousness to others. He didn't want to see one person get away. And I, I saw that that impetus came from his hearing and chanting, experiencing it himself, and going out on book distribution. And this is the great spirit of overflow that actually expands book distribution and expands our movement. It's coming from one's own personal experience and happiness in Krishna consciousness. Hearing and chanting. We recommend chanting one chapter of Bhagavad Gita a day. To that end, we have many quotes by Srila Prabhupada, please encourage the others to read this Bhagavad Gita at least one chapter a day. Bhagavad Gita as it is should be read by all of my students at least one chapter a day. If you implement this, then you'll have overflow, guaranteed. There are many other things that you can do instead of reading one chapter of Bhagavad Gita a day. For instance, for instance, Newspaper, nobody reads newspaper, but everyone looks at Facebook. Facebook. You could waste 10 years in front of Facebook. <laughs> what to speak of the time it takes to chant one chapter a day. So join Chad. Chad stands for chapter a day. Get that going in your zone. That If you, in your zone as a zonal supervisor, emphasize that everyone in your zone chants one chapter of Bhagavad Gita a day, at least the Sanskrit or the English, at least that much, comes that much in contact with Bhagavad Gita every day, you'll have no problems. Guaranteed. Also, be a sage page by page. Show devotees in your areas, in your zones, how to read Prabhupada's books. If you just put them in front of them, that's one thing that's very good. But if you show them, and if you break down the number of pages you read every day into small, manageable portions and encourage devotees to read what they can every day, then they'll become naturally enlivened. For instance, if you read eight pages of the Srimad Bhagavatam every day, and everybody here knows the formula now because it's so prevalent, you will finish the Bhagavatam in... Five years. You know that. So if you start now and you mark your calendar eight pages a day, you'll be able to tell us what date you're going to finish the Bhagavatam on. And that's important. You should know that. You should be on that kind of schedule because five years goes by very quickly. And if you look at Facebook every day instead of reading your pages of Bhagavatam every day, your brain will be mush. But if you read Bhagavatam at least eight pages a day, then you'll be fully Krishna conscious. You'll have love for God within your heart. So which is better? Brain of mush or love of God in your heart? Love. Very good. The second law of book distribution is you must, you must get books. So we say this together. Get yeah, but that's not good enough. You have to do it like you're in the military. You ready? One, two, three. Get books! So if you're a zonal supervisor watching this film, you can teach this to each one of your local temples. They must get books. And why? This sounds overly simple. But the answer is very scientific. And we've tested it in many universities around the world by the greatest scholars. And we've come to the conclusion is you can't distribute books that you don't have. And that's just a fact. And as soon as you get books, then you'll feel an emphasis to distribute them. If you keep books, for instance, in your car, if you keep books stocked in the temple, then there'll be a natural impetus to distribute them. Sometimes when people are asked, how many books do you distribute? I didn't distribute any. Do you have any books? I don't have any books. We've discovered why. You simply have to get books. There are books in all kinds of languages. Hearkening back to Srila Prabhupada's statement, as many books in as many languages and distribute throughout the world. You also have to consider your market. We're in marketing. 
What books do we have? We have language books. That means get the appropriate books for your particular population. Look at these. There's Japanese books, Vietnamese books, Arabic books, Farsi books. Visit Vietnamese people with Vietnamese books and they'll invite you to sit down. I was invited to sit down at Starbucks coffee and have, I didn't have a coffee, but I had a nice chat with these people from Vietnam and there, there they are holding their Vietnamese books. Here's a man from Afghanistan who embraced me. He's a Muslim. And he wanted to know if I prayed every day. It's because I said, Salam Aleikum, Aleikum Salam, Adava Kife Laka Alhamdulillah, Allah Wakbar. He said, you believe in Allah? I said, of course I believe in Allah. He said, you pray every day? And I said, 16 times a day. And he embraced me. And he took his Farsi book all the way back to Afghanistan. That Prabhupada book is sitting somewhere in Afghanistan, ready to go off. So, we must get books. And the third is, the more you show, the more you sell. It's just a fact that little jivas are wandering around the universe and they're looking for things. What does a tatasta jiva mean? Tatasta jiva means open to suggestion. Every little jiva walking around the world is open to suggestion. You can walk up to him and say, listen, little jiva, drink some Coca-Cola. It'll make you happy. And little jiva goes, uh-huh. Okay, I'll drink Coca-Cola. Even though every cell in little Jiva's body is going, don't you do it. I don't want any Coca-Cola in here. And little Jiva goes, no, he told me it'll make me happy, so I'm going to drink it. Put a little ice cube in there and I'll drink it down. And this is the impetus for all marketing, is the more you show, the more you sell. If you show your product, if you can make it visible to people, they'll come over and take it. So there are infinite numbers of ways to show Srila Prabhupada's books. In fact, the pictures in these books are so compelling that if people simply see them, their minds will become attracted. Prabhupada said, the, book the painters, the artists are the best book distributors. And never before in history has anyone come up with a plan like this, like Prabhupada's plan, to put together all these books with beautiful pictures of the spiritual world. And they are pictures of the spiritual world. In fact, when the artists first started painting these uh, paintings, they would come and ask Prabhupada, how do you paint the personified Vedas? Are they books with arms? They didn't know. And Prabhupada told them, no, they look like this. They asked, Jadarani asked Prabhupada, how does Krishna wear his dhoti? I don't know how to draw it. Prabhupada said, bring me a dhoti, I'll tie it for you. Tied it, said, like that. She sketched it and drew. These are directly inspired pictures about the spiritual world. And people need to see these because... If you don't see the variety of the spiritual world, if you don't see the forms of the spiritual world, then you'll necessarily, by default, have to be attracted to the forms of the material world. And there are plenty of expositions of forms in the material world now available everywhere you turn. So you have to show the spiritual world. This is the, the great contribution of of the Krishna consciousness movement to the world is to show these books to people. Show them. They'll take them. They're taking them everywhere that they're being shown. There are many ways to display. Here are a few pictures, but if you set up a table, if you set up a booth, if you uh, show them to officials wherever you go, they'll take them and look the other way as you walk through customs. Uh, here's one Mataji who all day long simply shows books and she sells thousands of them in Mayapur. If you go to events, and there are local events in your area, cultural events like pumpkin festivals, Diwali festivals, and so forth, people will take the books, and they are very readily. Placement of books through, into hospitals, motels, universities, and so forth is very easy because there's a strong sentiment for people to give money for some good cause. And the best cause is to distribute transcendental knowledge. So ask people to give donations for placing books in various institutions. Here's another way to show books, through the smart box. Every zonal supervisor can make sure that the smart box is installed in local institutions, stores, boutiques, restaurants in his or her area. And Every one of these is a little vending machine through which people can walk in, see the books, take them out, put their money in, and walk away 
with a smile on their face and love of God in their heart. Smart table means setting up tables in your temples and elsewhere so that people can see the full display of Srila Prabhupada's books. Will they take them? Yes. Dallas, Texas had a perfectly uh, adequate space, hallway, to set up a table. And years ago, in the junction between the very popular Kali Chanji's restaurant and the temple room, they set up some tables. And before they set up the tables, and they weren't displaying the books, how many books were they selling? Zero. After they set up the table, and they were displaying the books regularly, how many books did they sell? Hundreds, Hundreds thousands. So if you simply show, you will sell. Coming to full sets of books, make these visible. Talk about the sets. Prabhupada came to sell sets of Bhagavatams. He said, I want that every respectable person has a full set of Bhagavatam and Chaitanya Charitamrita in his home. So we can do this. It's altogether possible. You simply have to show them. Don't be intimidated because it's a big set. People will take the full set. The wisdom is that if you can sell one of something, you can sell it in bunches like bananas as well. Don't sell one banana, but sell the whole bunch. So similarly, we have bunches of books that go together well. Full sets of Bhagavatams, full sets of Sri Chaitanya Charitamritas. And if you go home to home and show them, people will move all their junk out of the way and they'll put in the Bhagavatam instead. And there's nothing better than that. Here's a very nice uh, Muslim man from Morocco buying a full set of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita from Shraddha Devi Dasi. So there are ways to sell full sets of Bhagavatams. Teach your temples, your temple presidents, your Sankirtan leaders how to get that information and come in contact with training so that they can sell full sets of Bhagavatams. You can also put together all of the books into a package and make everything available all at once. Here's 64 books, 388 lectures, a thousand hours of inspiration, cartels, madungas, pictures, everything all in one package and make that available. When you do that and people take it, their home, their office becomes an instant temple of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Families become enlivened and instead of watching Facebook, they have Krishna book. So Motel Gita is is a program that has a very bright future, just as the Gideons have placed millions and millions, coming up to billions of Bibles in hotels, motels all over the world. Similarly, the Motel Gita team is placing Bhagavad Gita's, which is a good idea. It's very much a wedge into Kali Yuga to have these books made visible and present in motel and hotel rooms all over the world. And this you can institute in your own zone, this Motel Gita. Number four law of book distribution is you must organize. You can do a little bit in your zone if you just let it go laissez-faire, but if you actually organize a system so that you know how much you're increasing every year and you get the devotees together to incrementally improve what they're doing every year, then there's no limit to how much you can expand. Apple computers started in a garage. Hewlett Packard started in a garage. How did they increase? How did they get bigger? They made plans and they organized. Steve Jobs used to take his small group of employees when they first started down to a local place in Northern California and they would retreat for five days and sit around and talk about how to improve. They came up with ideas, they brought them back and they implemented them. And in any organization, in any uh, company, you have to think about organization. And with book distribution, you have to do that too. Prabhupada came with an organized plan, seven purposes of ISKCON. Here's the seventh. With a view toward achieving aforementioned purposes, the first six, to publish and distribute periodicals, magazines, books, and other writings. Again, it's one of the main purposes of ISKCON, distribute, publish, and distribute periodicals, magazines, books, and other writings. If you're going to plan, you have to have a calendar. If book distribution is not on the calendar of your local temples, it's not happening. 
because there's so many other things happening. Your calendar will become full with all kinds of other events. Beautiful, nice events, but book distribution won't happen if it's not on the calendar. It should be on the calendar by the first of the year, or at least by the first week of the year. You should mark down when the major events are going to happen, and you should also set goals for the year before the year starts. If you don't have a goal as a zonal supervisor for how many books your zone is going to do, you're just not serious. So you have to be serious about book distribution because Prabhupada was serious about it. And as a zonal supervisor, you're representing Prabhupada and his movement. So get serious, organize, make a goal, and put it on the calendar. Goals are potent. One of my good friends, Will McCoy, great mentor, uh, had this quote, such a simple thing. He said years ago, when, when I saw it in, in a book somewhere, uh, his, his statement, goals are potent, I thought, that's too simple. But then the more I thought about it, the more this became a forefront of my life, organizing my sadhana and organizing book distribution. And as soon as you set a goal for your zone, for your temple, it's like flipping a switch. All the energy comes on as soon as everyone signs onto the goal. If you don't set a goal and no one signs on to it, no energy. As soon as the goal is set and everyone says, we have to go for the goal, sleepless nights, thinking about how to make the goal. And that's what the movement in our Krishna consciousness movement comes from. The real movement comes from that anxiety to how to make the goals. If you don't have that, you don't have any movement. If you get comfortable, you don't have any movement. You have to have goals to move forward and say, what are we going to do next? There's potency in the goals that are aligned with Srila Prabhupada's purposes. Set goals. They are potent. They are what moves uh, individual temples, communities. They have to, we have to have goals. And book distribution is one of the foremost important goals for our society. We've experimented in the BBT. We've set recent goals over the last few years. And just within five years, we've doubled the scores in the BBT by setting goals for North America. This can be done anywhere in the world. Book rooms. This was our first book room at ISV. It happened to be in the garage of Sonal and Rasika Shekhar, Neil and Nisha, a quiet little family home in the suburbs. And we set up, they volunteered their entire garage, parked their cars outside so that they could set up a book room. And that's where it all started. And you can see little labels on the racks so everyone knew which books to get and so forth. This becomes the heart of any community. Any temple should have a proper book room. In fact, I would go as far as to say you can measure the health of any community by how well their book room is organized and kept clean. In Toronto, they pride themselves in keeping their book room as clean as the Pujari room. No one wears shoes in there. They do a little puja in the book room to start the day, and the books are meticulously organized in categories and kept very nicely because they're deities of Krishna. So this is one of the signs of health in any zone that a zonal supervisor can look at. If you go to a new temple and you say, where's your book room? And they say, er, we don't have one. <laughs> You've got some work to do. Get your book room in order. And if the book room is down in the basement under the boiler with a drip coming down into the, cyst, into the books, you've also got a problem because these books are the center of our society. And if you're, if you're not keeping them nicely, if you're not keeping them in a place where they can go out, they are the storehouse of love of God and you have to make them available so that they can go out to people. Don't be stingy. Make these books available to all the devotees and all the people of the world. Don't restrict the flow of mercy. That is the first order of the zonal supervisor. If you restrict the flow of mercy, particularly hold back books, or don't make them available to people, then you must be fired. Hare Krishna. In fact, I say that with confidence because Prabhupada wrote letters emphasizing that managers in ISKCON, particularly the temple presidents at the time he was talking about, he said who didn't pay their BBT debts should be replaced. 
So this, this was his emphasis of management to, to show us that we should keep this as a priority, how we're keeping the flow of mercy going out through book distribution. There are many ways to organize, but uh, one very important way is to utilize technology. There are many different kinds of technologies that, that you can hook onto nowadays, and for the most part, they're very distracting, or they simply are engines for commerce and business of various mundane types. But we should take the same technologies, all of them, and utilize them for expanding the Krishna consciousness movement, uh, especially book distribution. Anasaktasya vishayan yatarham upayunjita nirbanda Krishna sanbande this is the principle of Krishna consciousness movement to take everything, the best of everything that's available and use it to expand the Krishna consciousness movement in far and wide, as far and wide as possible. For example, recently WhatsApp was released to the world and devotees realized that they could use it to great effect to organizing their Sankirtan party. Through WhatsApp you can send videos, messages, uh, and pictures and keep in touch with your entire Sankirtan party uh, in real time, simultaneously. There are ways in which we've greatly increased the collections on book distribution by utilizing the square. Just a simple process to hook into your smartphone and simply slide a credit card. So you should get all these things, invest in the best tools, that's part of organization. Sankirtan newsletter was something particularly uh, that Srila Prabhupada was particularly fond of. And one of his secretaries told us that when Prabhupada would get a stack of letters, which he did regularly, he would always open the Sankirtan newsletter first. So report your scores to the Sankirtan newsletter. That's a duty of the zonal supervisor to make sure that local managers are participating because that means that their energy is going into it. Because where attention goes, energy flows. Let's take a quick review of the four laws of book distribution. Number one, your sadhana must be strong because we're distributing the overflow. Number two, get books because it's a physical law that we've investigated and studied at universities all over the world. You can't distribute books that you don't have. Number three? The more you show, the more you sell. It's just a fact that when you show little Jiva something, he'll get interested because he's looking around the universe trying to find something nice. And all he's finding is Coca-Cola. But if you show them the Bhagavatam, little Jiva will get the Bhagavatam and his life will become perfect. That was the desire of Srila Vyasadeva. That's why he wrote it down. And that's why great Acharyas like Srila Prabhupada spend all their time thinking how to package these words in, in such a way that it will attract the attention of people all over the world. That's what we do too. That's what we're following. And number four is? Organize. You can do a little bit here and there if you're not serious. If you want book distribution to be a little hobby, then you can just let it go in whatever way it goes. But if you want it to become a great enterprise to, uh, to help be the engine of the Krishna consciousness movement, which it should be, then organize. Get together, brainstorm, set goals, and make incremental improvements. And you will become very successful and your community will thrive. Number Let's see, the next section is about the monthly Sankirtan festival. All zonal uh, supervisors should know the potency of once a month, at least once a month, holding an event so that everyone in the community can come together and experience the joy of walking out the door and meeting people and giving them the holy names, Krishna Prashadam and Krishna conscious literature. Whether they are prolific in their distribution or not does not matter. What matters is that you go out and try. Because just in the act of getting everyone together and walking out the door together and going to various places in your city or town and showing people Krishna consciousness, the entire collective consciousness of the community rises to a higher level. Therefore, when we go around and teach people this technique of the monthly Sankirtan festival, we say, you don't even have to distribute any books. You just have to have to get everyone out the door. 
And we say that your only goal has to be to have everyone go out and touch the pavement. And once they touch the pavement in the place they're going, they're finished for the day. You don't have to do anything else. Anything else you do after that is extra. Take all the pressure off of people. Just tell them that it's a worthy expedition just to go out. And it's hard enough just to get people to, to be organized enough to go out and go to a place just to start the process of Sankirtan. So you can try that. Sankirtan is for everyone. Everyone say Sankirtan is for everyone. At some period of time in ISKCON, there was a conception that divisions of labor, there's Sankirtan devotees, there's cooks, there's other people. No, everyone's a Sankirtan devotee. And the proof is, let me prove it, this is the blank movement. I'll try it again. This is the blank movement. It's the Sankirtan movement, last time I checked. So everyone in the movement is a Sankirtan devotee. So Sankirtan is for everyone. It's not a matter of divisions of labor, but everyone is invited to come and participate in this joyous occasion of going out and giving the holy names to others. That requires teamwork. We should work together. This is one of the great lessons of organizing Sankirtan is people can work together and learn to make uh, great friendships and bonds by working together through this teamwork. Also, an MSF, a once a month outing to distribute Krishna consciousness, should be fun and it should be organized so that nobody feels inconvenienced and it should involve everyone. And let me bring up this point that everyone means everyone. Can kids go on Sankirtan? Come on up here. Say yes, quick. Yes. Kids can go on Sankirtan. Can animals go on Sankirtan? Yes. Yes. We have dogs from our local congregation that do go out on Sankirtan. Please encourage them also. Dogs, adults, members of Google, Oracle, everyone's qualified to go on Sankirtan. So make it fun, make it organized, and invite everyone to come out. How do dogs go out? We make a backpack uh, for the dog. In fact, Hansapri is the pioneer of this program. She made a, a backpack for her dog, Yogi, to hold books, and people would come up and say, hey, nice dog. By the way, what, what's his name? Yogi. What's he, what's he got on his back? Books about yoga. That's using your brain how to spread the Sankirtan movement. And don't leave the poor dogs out of this process. Then there's a recipe. My friend Willie Jolly, who's still going, he's a, a, a famous public speaker. He always used to say, just as there's a recipe for great cakes and pies. His Aunt May used to say, there's a recipe for great cakes and pies. Similarly, there's a recipe for success. So in the Sankirtan movement, in the monthly Sankirtan festival, you must decide you're going to do it, set your goals, and then get started. It's that easy. Make it a goal for everyone to go out and touch the pavement together. And these are the mantras for the monthly Sankirtan festival. Book distribution is high sadhana. Everyone say. Book distribution is high sadhana. Always better service. Always better service. A lot doing a little. So always better service is a great mantra because it, it, it pervades and will spread to all parts of your management system as a zonal supervisor. And that is that after every event that you produce, you can look at it carefully and say, what did we do right and where is there room for improvement? And it's off this list that you can incrementally improve whatever you're doing and over time, come up with a great enterprise. Not just a good one, but a great one by making incremental improvements. And it's a, it's a paradigm in management that if people in your organization see that things are getting better, they'll do more than they have to in their participation. If they see that they're about the same all the time, 
then they do just what they have to. And if they see that things are going down, they're getting worse, then they quit and they join some other program. So you have to have incremental improvements as a zonal supervisor. And one of the places it starts is in your Sankirtan party. It's very measurable there, so take advantage. Here's some other principles of the monthly Sankirtan festival. Make it fun. Sometimes devotees go out and along with the book distribution they have a picnic or they rent a double-decker bus or they bring out their guitars and drums and they have a kirtan in the park together. Make it teamwork, everyone together. We don't do individual scores. We, we emphasize the team over the individual. Create fresh challenges. Everyone likes a fresh challenge. They want to think about it and how to rise up and meet it. Encourage the heck out of everyone. This is a great principle of management for all zonal supervisors. Look for what people are doing right and then take a minute to recognize it. Go over and recognize when you see something that people are doing in the correct way. There was a great book called The One Minute Manager. It came out in the early 80s. And it emphasized this principle of management. If you catch people doing something right and you go over and give them a, an appreciation, then your organization will flourish. Everybody needs encouragement. And if you simply think in this term, in these terms, how to encourage the heck out of everyone as a zonal supervisor, you'll have great success in your zone. Empower people. This movement is about empowerment. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu deputized everyone. He didn't say any particular class of people. He said everyone is empowered. Become a guru. And he didn't make any stipulation. He said everyone. Become guru. So everyone in your zone should be empowered. Call people forward and say, if you see a spark, if you see they have some talent, let them do it. Encourage them to do it. That's what we're meant to do as zonal supervisors is to empower others to move the movement forward. So again, fun. Make it fun. Here's a picture of some of the devotees in Toronto going out together, displaying books, giving out prasad, and meeting people. You can't have any more fun in a weekend than going out with your friends, distributing Krishna consciousness, and coming back and having fantastic prasadam at the temple. Chanting on the streets, and a morning program followed by breakfast, a little bit of training, going out together just for a few hours, and then having lunch and sharing stories. That could be the simplest way of doing a monthly Sankirtan festival. Any community, starting with one person, can do it, all the way up to tens of thousands of people. And if you do it once a month, your temple, your zone will flourish. Start small and then grow, just like Vam and Dave. <laughs> Here's some tips and ideas for zonal supervisors to ponder as they develop their Sankirtan programs. Pick the ripe fruits. Not only in management, look for those who are ripe, who are open. Deal with the willing. Don't try to force people, but look for people who are eager and open. And then bring them in, encourage them. And in book distribution, we're looking for those people who are open and willing. And we simply present and pour in as much mercy as possible. Here's a picture of a ripe fruit on the left. And here's a picture of an unripe fruit on the right. Learn to see the difference and go with the flow. Don't try to force yourself on people who aren't interested. Court Explore means in book distribution, 80% we know what works. Do it and keep it moving. Take 20% and explore things that you haven't done before because it's exciting and you always need innovation so that you don't get caught holding an old technique that becomes obsolete that you can't do anymore. For instance, we used to work in front of Walmart because they gave us permission and then they changed their mind a few years later. And it was lucky for us that we had other kinds of things that we, were, we could easily trans, transition into. So don't get stuck in just one thing, but learn how to do core and explore. Our prime directive, and this is something zonal supervisors should teach everyone in their zone about book distribution, is to leave everyone with a good impression. What is our prime directive? Leave everyone with a good impression. Everywhere you go, in your household, Leave your spouse with a good impression. <laughs> Leave your kids with a good impression. Leave your dog with a good impression, if you have one. And when you go out 
into the temple community, leave people with a good impression. When you go out the door on Sankirtan to distribute books, then you should? Yet if you live your life like this, leaving a good impression on other people, then you'll be welcome wherever you go. That starts with leaving a good impression on yourself. Good rounds, reading your Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam every day. Don't forget to leave yourself with a good impression. Srila Prabhupada's job, he was an ambassador of goodwill, and he's given us that job also. We are in the service business. We're meant to serve others. Our motto is, always better service. We are Krishna's instruments. We remain humble and hungry. We go out for self-purification. We do service for service sake. I save one soul at a time, beginning with myself. Please repeat. Just like on the airplane, when they give you the safety announcement, they tell parents, put the oxygen mask on yourself first before you put it on your children. Because if you, if you expire before that, you're able to put it on your child, then he or she will also go down with the plane. So you have to save yourself first. Treat people with respect. Offer kind words. Focus on teamwork. Preaching means giving. Don't be condescending. Express empathy. Practice reflective listening. Make people feel special because they are. Everyone is special. And in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Vidya Vinaya Sampani Brahmani Gavihastani Shuni Chaiva Shupakecha Pandita Samadarshina. In essence, this means that a person who's advanced in consciousness sees how special everybody is, no matter what their body is, because he or she sees that God is in everyone's heart and that every living entity is a part and parcel of Krishna. And so this is the Sankirtan vision. That is the vision of the the advanced devotee. So we should also develop the habit of expressing sincere gratitude and thanks to people that we meet, that we live with and associate with. These are all principles of Sankirtan, and when they're inculcated in the Sankirtan devotees during the monthly Sankirtan festival, they begin to spread throughout the community, and that's what makes that's what makes a very powerful and cohesive community of, sankirtan, of devotees is those who are dedicated to these basic principles of expansive good-heartedness. Here's fanthespark.com where you can get more information about book distribution. We also have distributebooks.com and iskonbookdistribution.com for more information. We have a team in India called the India Sankirtan Leaders Team. And in America, we have the North American Sankirtan Leaders Team. All of these are uh, good organizations for your temple presidents, Sankirtan leaders, to be connected with to expand their book distribution. And now we have time for a few reflections. And the main focus is how we can help zonal supervisors in ISKCON to develop strong book distribution programs in their zones. Any other points that you'd like to make? Shraddha. Try to hurry up though. There you go. I like the fact that um, work locally, but think globally. Yes. That really expands your... Work locally, think globally. You can, you can build a, a model that can be exported. Any good technology that you develop in any part of the world, if it works, it, it can become, as Seth Godin says, an idea virus. Good ideas are what spread all over the world. And you don't have to go anywhere special, but if you stay where you are and you develop something that really works, you can export it to places all over the world. Very nice. I like the idea of um, 
the book distribution is overflowing of the taste you have for Srila Prabhupada's books. Yes, book distribution is an overflow. And that's really what our movement is. It's a spiritual movement. It's based on the principle of becoming enlivened by hearing about Krishna and then teaching others, chanting. Kirtan means to glorify. Kirti means fame. It means you're so happy with hearing about the person, you want to speak it to other people in as many different ways as possible and as loudly as possible. Thank you. Yes. I like the idea of uh, leaving everybody with a good impression. You like the idea of leaving everyone with a good impression. Yes, I can tell from your smile that you're doing <laughs> that. Uh, Hansa Priya. We are a Sankirtan movement. Every, each and every department goes out. We are a Sankirtan movement. Each and every department goes out. Yes, don't neglect departments and leave them at home. Let them go out too. The monthly Sankirtan festival it was Prabhupada's idea. He asked everybody in the temple to go out. He said, you can leave one pujari back. <laughs> and that was in New York City, 340 West 55th Street. We had a lot of deities to take care of and a lot of departments. There were hundreds of devotees living in that one building together on 340 West 55th. And he said, everyone can go out. He wrote a letter to Chicago, temple president, how is it possible? He said, no problem, just send everybody out and leave one person back. They can take care of the deities. And when we did do that, in 340 West 55th Street in New York, we saw women with baby carriages with books stuffed in the bottom. We saw people who were coming from behind their desks to go out. Everyone felt happy and enlivened to, to be in that tension of walking out the door and wondering what's going to happen next. And that's where the movement lives. It's in that tension. Yes. I, I like the idea of uh, marrying yourself to the orders of your spiritual master. See, Marry yourself to the order of the spiritual master. That's the secret of success. Yes. And that very clear order has been given by Prabhupada to distribute books. Many other orders as well, but this particular order you can see was his life and soul. The first building that we bought in ISKCON was on Beacon Street in Boston. And the reason that we bought the, book, the, the building was so Srila Prabhupada could open his first press. That's why he wanted it. He put his press in first. He sent his press people and his artists there first. And from there, all other programs expand. Yes. I like the fact that uh, it's important that we show people how special they are because they really are special. Absolutely. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Ascharyavat Pashtiti Kashyadenam, Ascharyavat Vadadi Tataiva Chanyaha. The soul is amazing. There's nothing more amazing in this world. In fact, there's nothing very amazing at all except for the soul. The soul is the most amazing thing because it's superior energy. It's the superior consciousness. And every person we meet, we should thrill in meeting them by seeing that actually here's part of God and God's within the heart of this living entity. That's the spirit of the Sankirtan movement. I like um, the goals are potent um, and they turn on the switch that energizes everyone. Yeah, my old friend Will McCoy, goals are potent. We should have him come down here sometime and, and give a talk. Good old Will McCoy. Yes. So Prabhuji, I like that uh, I save one soul at a time starting with myself. Yes, I save one soul at a time beginning with myself because we're not condescending. We're feeling empathy that we're in the same boat. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Atmao pam yena sarvatra sarvam mai, uh, excuse me, Atmao pam yena sarvatra Samyam Pashati Yorjuna, Sukham Va Yadi Va Dukham, Sa Yogi Paramo Mataha. He said the best yogi is one who f is not condescending but feels empathy towards all others. That's the mood of the Sankirtan movement that can be inculcated by zonal supervisors who teach this, uh, this process of empathy to everyone in their zone through the process of Sankirtan. What else? We have. The cooperation, I think the cooperation is the key, uh, as most of the learning which we have, uh, if we share, then we don't need to reinvent the wheel, so it's, it's important. Cooperate, we... yes, and when there's a spirit of cooperation in a community, it's a very happy community. Shred has something, someone from the internet. Vaikundayak Prabhu from India. Vaikundayak, who's himself going out and distributing books, he's just an emissary from ISV. <laughs> He's gone down to South India and is having great success down there distributing books. What does he say? He says two things. One, he likes start small and grow, like Vamandev Dutri Vikramar. 
And the second one is living entities who are tathast are basically means that they are open to suggestion. So if they don't hear about books, then they will go for Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> don't leave the poor jivas out there drinking Coca-Cola. <laughs> and the cart comes down every time I get in an airplane. They go, you want some Coca-Cola? And I say, yeah, I want Coca-Cola. He's like, why do you want Coca-Cola? Because <laughs> I heard about it. They said, it's good. Coke is it. Coke is the real thing. And co pour out a bottle of happiness. And that's why they took it. And if we have a campaign to say, the Bhagavatam is it. Bhagavatam is the real thing. And if you read Bhagavatam and get real happiness, people will read it. Yes. Others? Yes, Malini. When the goals are huge, um, the point that you made that if you just attempt, make an attempt, then you'll get superior knowledge and strength. And that's what has been happening all these years, which is very practical. Yes, and in a very practical way, we begin the monthly Sanctified Festivals with keeping it very simple and keeping the bar so low that everyone says, oh, I could do that any day. I could step over that. And that's where we want it. And as devotees get a taste for doing book distribution, you start to move the bar up and make, as you're saying, the goals a little bigger and bigger and then tell, they can actually seem huge. And when they seem huge, we're left to pray to Lord Chaitanya. And each time he makes a miracle happen. And that's where we start to develop our faith. And how else does a volunteer organization that's based on spiritual principles grow other than taking these kinds of risks? It's all based on this kind of risk, which is, by the way, the replacement for gambling. <laughs> you should gamble every day of your life by taking a risk for spreading the Krishna consciousness movement like Prabhupada did, getting on the Jaladuta. Everyone said, that's a big risk. And he said, I'm taking it. So everyone has to take that risk in order to feel that movement in the movement. What else? Yes. Make Sankirtan fun and distribute prasadam after distributing books. There's no earthly reason why not to distribute prasadam wherever you go. It puts a smile on people's face in every circumstance. Whenever you distribute prasadam, people become happy. And your other point was? Make distribution fun. And make it fun. Make book distribution fun, because it is. There's no more fun that you can have in any given day or weekend than distributing books. Yes? Uh, we should be very confident, because what we are doing is, is really pure and true. The, the fact is that like, we are competing with the other 2 billion books of uh, uh, the Bible in the motels. Um, despite that fact, in the last seven years, people who relate themselves with Christianity has decreased by 8%. So it's not just the quantity, the quality matters. And we have the quality in the books. Yes, thank you very much. Would you, I also like, the, when we uh, give, we grow. I like that mantra. When we give, we grow, yes. By giving, you grow. By holding back, you become a miser. Nobody likes misers. Don't be a miser. Don't lock your book room. <laughs> Don't hold back books from people who want to go out and distribute them. Don't charge exorbitant prices for the books so that it gives a disincentive to people. Prabhupada never did that. He also always made sure that the books were as inexpensive as possible so they could flow like water. Don't be a cheapskate. <laughs> Lord Chaitanya is not a cheapskate. Lord Chaitanya is the most magnanimous. He's Audarya. That's our mood. We want to break open the storehouse of love of God and distribute it as contents without considering who's a fit or unfit candidate. This is the mood of the Sankirtan movement. We don't hold back. We open the floodgates. We give the opportunity to everybody and we take the books out of the book room and take them out to the people and give them out as profusely as possible. That is the mandate of the zonal supervisor. What else? Hey, we got SKP in here. <laughs> Are these loud enough microphones? Are you monitoring this? You better be catching on. <laughs> Hare Krishna, bro. I, I like that core and explore like Walmart after that we are going door to door. Yes. Uh, this year we plan to go to Mountain House. Or Mountain yeah. House. It's a lo new location. We have three villages with full of uh, Indians. <laughs> <laughs> Mountain House. Yes. <laughs> yes, Core and Explore. Look for new ways to expand book distribution and the Sankirtan movement. 
My mic has gone practically dead, Ramana, and I don't know why, but it's way down. Yes. I also like the point where everyone doing a little goes a long way. Yes. We practically saw that in ISV last year you know, for reaching the goals. Yes. A lot of devotees each doing a little bit. If you get the whole community involved and everyone does their level best, then it'll come out to a great result. I like uh, your point saying that the direct energy of the Lord uh, means embracing the orders of uh, Srila Prabhupada. Yes. And uh, the point of uh, helping Srila Prabhupada distribute books. Yes. The direct order is the internal potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And it comes down through disciplic succession to the local point. If, you have, uh, if you're working under a particular spiritual authority in this movement and you get an order to wash pots, you are connected to the internal potency by following that instruction. I think it's okay now. So, yeah, connect yourself to the order and then hold on to it no matter what else happens in your life. Yes. Hare Krishna Pooji. I like the other point you made about leaving a good impression where uh, we should practice what we preach, right? Make sure our sadhana is good, make sure you're doing the devotional service in a proper way. Yes, Otherwise, if, it's if you hard. take the responsibility of being a leader, it puts a great, a, a great um, impetus, it gives great impetus for you to actually follow because people are watching you all the time. And everyone is meant to be an ambassador of goodwill and a representative of their spiritual master and of this movement. So we, we are compelled to have good behavior, sadachar. Prabhuji, I like the point of uh, encouraging and empowering people. Encourage the heck out of everybody. <laughs> Give encouragement to living entities because they're tired of being discouraged. Everyone wants some encouragement, and it's it's like uh, it's it's like giving water to people in the desert. It's such a discouraging environment in the material world. And if you genuinely encourage people, they'll feel enlivened. And a few words can stick with a person for years, for a whole lifetime, if you take the time to genuinely encourage people. And that's what our movement runs on, real encouragement. A fun mm. from the internet. This is Bhakta Sudeep Samnes, and he's also talking about everyone is part of the Sankirtan. And he has an example. When someone accepts Srimad Bhagavatam or Bhagavad Gita or any other book, they too become part of it if we encourage them to share it with their friends or connect us to them. For example, if they say they have a Bhagavad Gita, okay, so how about you take one and give it to someone else? That we make. It's an excellent marketing technique. In fact, Seth Godin, in, in his, one of his recent releases of his books, he has 17 bestsellers. He, he doesn't allow people to buy one book. They can only buy two. <laughs> we don't sell one at a time, only sell two. So they have to give one to somebody else. I thought that was an excellent marketing. Also, whenever he sends his books out, he orders from Uline these clear plastic bags. And he sends everything in clear plastic bags so everyone sees it as it's being mailed around. <laughs> and this is which, which principle out of the four laws of book distribution? <laughs> Yeah, why not? If you can think of ways in which you can be more visible, take them. Follow the four laws and you'll be successful. Malini. Prabhuji, regarding the more you show, the more you sell. Um, our book room uh, can only fit a certain number of books because we have a small one. So recently we were making an order and then um, we asked Vishwanath Prabhu that we only can fit so many, what will we do? Says, the book room doesn't look good when it is empty. I want it to be full all the time. <laughs> yes. It looks both good when it's full and when it's empty, depending on your... <laughs> Ruji, when you were mentioning all the principles, um, each and every principle, I was just thinking that ISV devotees exemplify each and every principle that you have discussed so far. And uh, they actually go above and beyond uh, representing each and every principle that you have yes, mentioned. Yes, and this is an important point for management of a zone, is that if, if you set up parameters based on spiritual principles, then gradually over time that everyone within each community starts to adopt these particular principles. That is the duty of zonal supervisors to inculcate 
these spiritual principles so that everyone can live their lives according to them and the society is based on them. Thank you. Nice points. Sundarananda. So, um, many, I, I mean, I like many points, but one point that stuck to me was uh, be uh, sage page by page. If, yes. you read, if you read eight pages of Srimad Bhagavatam, every day you'll finish it in five years. Or if you read 41 pages a day, which takes an average of one hour and seven minutes a day, you will finish the whole Bhagavatam in one year, 40, just 41 pages a day. So the main point is that you should be on a schedule. Just as you're on a schedule to chant japa, you should be on a schedule to read Prabhupada's books. And if you are, your life will change. You will become detached from material sense gratification. You will become uh, insightful in spiritual principles. You will have developed intelligence to make good decisions in life. You'll have inspiration from within your heart simply by being regularly in contact with the Srimad Bhagavatam. Regularly means that you do the same amount every day without fail. Doesn't matter if you're traveling, doesn't matter if you're sick, you finish your pages every day no matter what. And if you combine that with your regulated chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, you will advance in spiritual life without doubt. Regarding the point of give giving, you were, I like that point where you said those who lead a life of life of giving, they live a life of abundance. You ought to know, <laughs> Hare Krishna. Um, yes, and it's a fact. When you give something away, then you become bigger yourself. And the miracle of Lord Chaitanya's movement, what he taught is, you have more capacity you actually get more room to, to give, and there's abundance in your life that you can give away to others. It's, it's really the spiritual principle to give. Even during Christmas, when people have been interviewed all over the world, there's a study I read that I included in my book, that when people were interviewed, thousands of people, what, is it better to give or to receive? What do you think they say? Yeah. Why? I mean, because it's a principle, by giving you grow, you actually become a bigger person. And that's what Sankirtan is based on, give, and give more. Yes. Uh, Prabhu, I like the, the, you put that point, the hit the pavement. Recently in the Christmas, December marathon, myself, Shivakumar Prabhu, we are only both in the Sankirtan. We thought, just go hit the pavement. And we just meeting want to go for only for one hour we end up going three four hours probably because that relieves the pressure and uh, we met many people who took uh, so that's a very good example yes and and this principle that that you feel pressure the mind builds up this idea that i'm not safe that uh, that i don't know what to do and so forth but if you get this uh, principle in place that you go out and try anyway and you don't put any expectation on yourself because you're just an instrument then Lord Chaitanya can use you and wonderful things can happen and miracles always happen and we've seen this again and again people are hesitant to go out if they just go out for a little while sometimes they don't want to come back again <laughs> yes um, very important for supervisors which Malini Mataji just demonstrated was um, increase the heck out of everyone. How she just pointed out and said that all the four principles that you talked about are actually sh showcased by the people in the congregation. Yes, and, and not and miss an opportunity to say good things. An opportunity yeah. to say good things. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if the new zonal supervisor comes to town, and he or she walks around and encourages the heck out of everybody. What will be the response? Huh? You you want you want that person to stick around? Yes. Yeah. So this is a, a very powerful principle to in, find out what people are doing right, and we say fan the spark. Whatever good you see people doing, encourage it. Encourage people to do more. The word courage comes from courage, which means the heart. People move by what's in their heart and you have to touch their hearts by encouraging them that means see what they're doing right and and give them some love give them some conscious love some appreciation for what they're doing that's what motivates people so what motivates kids 
It was motivates adults. It motivates old people. It motivates animals. When you give them a little attention and affection, they'll do whatever you ask. And it motivates Krishna too, because if you give Krishna your attention and love and appreciation, then he responds. And that's how the universe moves. And that movement is. It's a movement of spiritual consciousness, which means appreciation. What else? Focus on the right people. Yes, look for the right fruits, because in, in organizing a Sankirtan party, there are enough people that will come forward and say, I want to do this. They'll come forward with ideas you never thought of, and they'll say, I like this. Take those people, give them an opportunity to grow. Put them in a position so that they can uh, be empowered and, and do what they like to do. And everywhere we go, our principle of distribution is based on the Bhagavatam. Ishvare taradine shu bali sheshu tu satsucha prima maitri popeksha yakaroti samadhyamaha. The very advanced devotee is the Madhyama Adhikari. And the Madhyama Adhikari sees different classes of people and he's organizing his life around the of distribution. That's why he sees the categories. So he's looking for people who are open, the ripe fruits. And when he's also preparing his, his or her life so that as soon as he or she sees an open person, the Madhyama Adhikari pours in as much mercy as possible. Always stocking up, always keeping it ready so that whenever the ripe fruit comes along, he can pour in as much mercy as possible. And as far as people who are, aren't interested, who have an envious feeling against what we're doing, we respectfully disconnect from them and go around them. Saves you a lot of time and energy. I was just thinking that uh, the whole festival is one thing, but it's like a coronation comes this offering festival, where the day when we offer it, it, it becomes more formal. And when it's consolidated, it's, it's some solid thing that you make to Prabhupada. And it's a ritual that makes an impression in everybody's heart that uh, we were part of that offering. And even uh, people who, just new people who come, they just stand there. And if Prabhupada says that all of them are going back to God, and everybody gets the mercy just by hearing and appreciating what the devotees did. So I was just thinking how in Ramayana, many monkeys were there, and half of them were like just substitutes. But they, all, they didn't even participate in the fight, but they all go back to Godhead. So even by doing the side things in Sankirtan, like everybody gets appreciate, appreciation. That's a nice point. I'm glad you brought it up. This is a fine detail, but in offering scores to Srila Prabhupada and the deities, I've noticed in some places that it becomes routine. And the list is read out in sort of in a lackluster way. Boom, next thing. And practically nobody take, pays that much attention. And it's a little bit, you know, like, but if you, if you make it more formal, the offering, as during the monthly Sankirtan festivals, devotees come together after the event, they consolidate everything, and they make a very demonstrative offering to Prabhupada and the deities, where everyone in the community is present, and they write something about it with realization, and they include every, all the categories of people, then the effect is much more powerful. And your, your point about everyone being included, including the ones who are there as substitutes, we've seen it. Even parents come to visit their family here at ISV or other temples where the Sankirtan movement is going on. And because of that, they're, they're there for a few weeks or something like that and say, what are we doing this weekend? Disneyland or Knott's Berry Farm or we're going to go to Universal Studios. No, we're going on book tour, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> and by golly, Mom comes out on book distribution and she starts chanting 16 rounds and the next thing you know, she's on her way back to Godhead, new trajectory. So inviting everybody to come along at, at the Sankirtan movement, it says... At, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's method, he wanted to drown everyone. These, this is the language of the Chaitanya Charitamrita. He said he didn't care if you're old, invalid, or blind. He wanted to drown you in the ocean of love of God. And this is the, the way in which we expand this, this ocean, this flood, 
is by doing it ourselves and then inviting people to come into that energy. That's what the flood is. Nice points. Yes. Another one from the internet. So this is actually Lina Mataji from Dublin. And she's actually giving an example, which is um, from the principle, everyone each does a little bit. So she's commenting on Lina Mataji's comment that the space was limited in the book room. So she said, how about people keep one box of Bhagavad Gita and one Srimad Bhagavatam and one Krishna book in their garages so that we don't miss the opportunity? Yes, and you can take into your house the, the full cases of books and pile them in front of the refrigerator and then tell everyone that we're not eating until these are distributed. <laughs> Or if you have kids that like to play games, you can pile in front of the screen and say, no games until all the books are gone. I mean, there's a lot of ways you can be inventive. Bring the books out. Yes. So uh, book distribution is the most rapid way for spiritual advancement. That was yes, book distribution is a rapid way to expand in Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada said, if you just try, then you'll get superior strength and knowledge in Krishna consciousness. If you just try, make the attempt, go out with the party, even if you're scared, even if you don't know what's going to happen, just try to do it. Because if you do, then you'll find a whole world open up to you where Krishna's helping you from within the heart, where you see other people who you wouldn't be interested in Krishna consciousness, suddenly become interested in Krishna consciousness, and your faith increases. And it is an addiction that you want to, f that, that is very favorable. If you get addicted to this feeling of going out of your comfort zone, and you feel more comfortable outside your comfort zone than you do in your comfort zone, then you're in the right place for spiritual advancement. Thank you so much for a wonderful class. Um, as, you, as you are telling about the Sampradaya, like how we got this complete gift and, um, and all us, like basically in our lines has given books and you are also in the modern time, you showed that how the American Revolution and even in the Cuba. And also I was remembering one of the lecture you were saying that even the atheistic idea of this evolution, the Charles Darwin has purposefully written the book and then he spread the idea all over the world one of the prominent, but just by one writing a book and spreading his ideas. Yes, books change the world. Books are containers. And as a matter of fact, there's still a valid way and the foremost way in which knowledge is spread in the world today. Sales are not going down. Although electronic media is going up, people are still attached to their books. There's still something an aesthetic, and, and for a long period of time, they'll still be extant and, and available. Not only that, for centuries, people have ideologies, and governments have been formed based on these ideologies, movements have been formed based on the ideologies, educational systems have developed because of the presence of various books. For instance, Origin of the Species, People know about the theory of evolution. Why? Because somebody took the trouble to write it down. And now it's all pervasive. Even though you may not have a copy of that book in your house, you know the ideology, you know the philosophy behind it. Similarly, economic philosophies, Adam Smith, Wealth of Nations, the idea of capital was codified in a book and now is a prevalent idea taught in universities, practiced by various governments and so forth because it was written down. So in a similar way, anarto pasanam sakshad bhakti yoga manhoksaje lokasya ajanato vidvams chakre sattvata samhitam. This very strategy of Vyasadeva that he wrote down the Bhagavatam simply to enlighten all the people of the world. Lokasya ajanato, because they don't know, they're in ignorance. And they'll get it through these containers with uh, the best ideas in the world. They come from beyond the closed system of the material world. They come from the spiritual world. They're like seeds. In fact, the very word broadcast is a term which comes from farming. Broadcasting means throwing seeds far and wide. And then broadcasting got extended into the terminology of television, radio, and so forth. 
And when we take out the message in written form and we give it to people, we're literally broadcasting the holy names. The books are literary kirtan. It's spoken and written down. Prabhupada made this distinction when people came to him and said, well, what about kirtan, harinam, and what about which one should we do? He said, you should do both. He said that this distribution of books is, I am speaking, that is my kirtan, and is being written down, and then it's being distributed all over the world. Shukadev Goswami is speaking. Sages are listening. Parikshit is listening. It's written down. Now it's being distributed. That's kirtan. That's broadcasting the message. And which is louder? Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta said, the written kirtan is louder because it can go more places. It can fly across the ocean. It can the White House. It can stay around for four or five hundred years. But both are important and they should go on simultaneously. The main point is to take it out and distribute to as many people as possible. Yes, two more. One from the internet and then SKP. Actually, two on the internet. Pardon? There are two on the internet. Two on the internet. Yeah. So this is uh, Karunya Shakti Mataji. And she says, uh, please tell Guru Maharaj that I have often thought that the Back to Godhead magazine should be sent out in plastic for the world to view and not covered like it is. Very good idea. We should implement that. We let the BTG people know. Who can call them? Karunya Shakti? It's your homework. <laughs> call the BPT. Write, write them a note and I'll forward it to them. And then uh, continuing on from the concept of addiction, it looks like Lina Mataji in Dublin is addicted to the thought of, you know, from, from her suggestion that we should store books in our garages, she's now saying that you should store books in your cars also. And I'd like to mention that Yash uh, Rabin Prabhu at the back, he actually does that. He buys um, cases of books and keeps them in his car. And um, I was just visualizing, Maharaj, that these days if you go for Uber or Lyft, you where it shows on a freeway there are three Ubers going and three Lyfts going and I'm just thinking that if they can also show that there are Bhagavad Gita's inside the car. <laughs> well, Yuga Dharma is working on Uber books. It's a little program that shows when you go out, every time you distribute a book, you just click on your information and then it, it puts a little marker on the map where that book was distributed. So if you do 20 in a day, it marks every place that you stand because you're being... You, you know you are being recorded, everything that you do in your life, right? So you might as well record <laughs> all the good stuff you do. Yeah, Uber book. Okay, uh, SKP. Prabhu Hare Krishna. I think uh, already Malini Mataji mentioned that our team, ISV, is uh, everybody, like when I go with, uh, like I go in with different teams, so I learn many things within each and every devotee. I, everybody brings up a good point when I do Sankirtan. Even kids, I rarely go with kids, but one time I went, Prabhu, the, the kid, he's calling inside and he's talking about Uttanapada, Dhruva Maharaj lineage, and the, the, the recipient, he was, uh, was actually shocked, by, because how these kids know all this lineage, I don't know, even my father. So, he, so he's saying that, and finally they took Srimad Bhagavatam, I mean to say, everybody we can learn from each and every, individually and collectively, we can do more books. Yeah. Yes, this is the power of the Sankirtan party. Uh, all for one and one for all, working together, and we stay in this open-minded, open mode of always being eternal students, learning how to improve ourselves, and, and taking lessons from every single person. And now, we have to come to a close, so we'll take two more. Prabhuji, sorry, Prabhu, last point. Um, like Prabhupada said, um, that everybody in the temple should go out and you can leave one pujari at the temple. Um, I was just thinking how ISV devotees goes out and Ramananda Saka Prabhu is the only one <laughs> staying at the temple. And he, <laughs> and he also goes out um, and he said that when he came for the last uh, day after Thanksgiving, Harinam, he said, Mataji, today I'm 
and to distribute books. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, particularly today, we want to thank the zonal supervisors for the great sacrifice that they're making to spread the Sankirtan movement. The higher, higher you climb, the harder the wind blows. It's lonely at the top. Management is a great burden, but it's very much necessary. And those zonal supervisors who stay close to these principles of distributing mercy to as many people as possible will feel a great relief in this burden of management because when you see the result, it makes it all worth it. When you see that the people are getting this spiritual water coming from the spiritual world, then you can justify all the pressure as a zonal supervisor. If you simply have a closed system where everyone's uh, bringing the normal problems that come through social intercourse to you and the, you're not distributing Christian consciousness, it may be unbearable pressure. But it all gets released and purified when the devotees are able to go out into the public each Community is an individual or organism, and organisms have to breathe. Breathe means there's exhaling and there's inhaling. And the exhaling means that we go out and give mercy to people that we don't know all over the world. And in that process, we get oxygen-rich realizations by seeing for ourselves the miracles of Sankirtan. That, would, that comes back into the closed system of the community and it nourishes everybody in it. So the International Society for Krishna Consciousness is an organism and it's meant to breathe. We have to give out and we have to bring back the realization that comes from giving and then we can become successful. So zonal supervisors around the world, we offer our obeisances to you and thank you for expand the Sankirtan movement. Go pray manande haribo. Vansha kopadruba sha kripa sindo bhyeva cha patitanam pavani bhyo vaishnavi bhyo namo namaha. We have seven minutes left. I was just thinking that one main point we mentioned is um, like the heart of the Sankirtan, you, your every breath is for Sankirtan, your enthusiasm and the sincere prayers that you do when you travel, I think it holds up uh, everybody in the Sankirtan movement. So I think uh, at every temple to have somebody who has that desire uh, to preach and live for it uh, since the beginning, I think that that is like the salt in the preparation. That, that exemplifies everything. So thank you for your prayers, which sustains everything and your blessings. <laughs> I'm just... Truth be told, in my twilight years, I'm just being carried along by the, the flow of your enthusiasm. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janda Balaba Giri Vadadhari Gopi Janda Balaba Giri Vadadhari Da 
Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yamuna Chira Chari Munatira Banachari Naya Radha Madhava Tunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janna Balaba Varadhari Nabalaba Girivadhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Jashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Jashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Jamuna Tira Banachari Jamuna Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Marande Tai Gora Hari Bo Hari Bo Hari Bon Tai Go Dari Bo Now we're going to have uh, the Guru Puja where we get to uh, Shastra says and that is to worship the great souls, our founder Acharya, Viscon is Divine Grace AC Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, is a certified, verifiable great soul uh, who has spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. Love and adoration at his lotus feet will make advancement. As per the advice of the Shastra, 
Mahatmanas to Manparta Daivim Prakritim Ashritaha. Such persons are under the control of the internal potency of the Lord. What they say is ordinary, it's empowered speech coming through disciplic succession. And in the Shastra it also said, Mahat Sevam Muktes. By worshipping the great souls, one opens the gate to liberation, to the spiritual world. Rahuganai Tatnati Nachejaya Nirvapanad Grihadva Nachandasa 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 some something Jalagni Suryar Vina Mahat Pada Rajo Bishekam that you um, can't attain spiritual life, advancement in spiritual life, simply by becoming a very strict householder, by becoming an exemplary sannyasi, by performing great austerities and um, being very strict in all kinds of ways. Of course, these are all recommended. But these are not the cause for advancing in spiritual life. Uh, what is? It is service to the great souls, to the Mahatmas, to the most advanced devotees. By that kind of service, which is mentioned, Rajo Bishekam, it means you're taking a bath in the, uh, the foot dust of such a person by following the instructions. And by that, one actually becomes elevated to the highest position. Therefore, we perform this Guru Puja. It's not by rote, it's not some ceremony, but it's a heartfelt way in which we recognize, uh, we, we've verified for ourselves the greatness of this personality, this divine grace, Asi Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, and we wholeheartedly worship him with songs, prayers, a special puja, and so forth. And by doing that, by that connection and by that worship, we advance in spiritual life. So now we perform the Guru Puja by singing the song uh, written by Nartam Das Thakur, which is meant to honor the spiritual master. And then we'll have Kirtan, and then we'll have Prashadam. Go Premanande Aribo! Thank you very much, everyone, for coming out here on a Saturday morning. Hare Krishna. Thank you to everyone who joined us on the internet from many different parts of the world. Please stick around if you'd like to join us for the Kirtan. You can dance in your homes or wave your arms outside the car, wherever you may be. Hare Krishna. <laughs>